How's it going, everybody? I am super excited about today's stream. This is going to be quite the adventure. We are in Alaska at the beginning of winter. I guess that's arguable depending on what you consider winter, but it is frigid. As you can see, um, I'm actually just outside Fairbanks right now and there is snow everywhere. We're on live weather, live time and just look at this place it is a winter wonderland right now it's about 10 30 or so in the morning 10 45 in the morning and we have got quite a, f a few uh, clouds in the sky and i have quite the itinerary ahead for us in the beaver bush plane which is one of the greatest airplanes of all time any anyone who loves bush flying this is like a dream airplane to have um, even Harrison Ford has one and said that this was like his favorite airplane of, of all of the ones that he's flown. So what I'm going to do is give you a lay of the land here and just show you where I'm at and what we're going to be doing. Um, again, we're going to be flying uh, the DHC-2 Beaver Bush plane. It is such a cool airplane. I'll go through all the systems for that and... Um, as always, I'll do it as realistic as I can. And this is going to be our runway we're taking off from, which is insane. Right here, we barely have a runway. And so it'll be a thrill right off the bat. And um, we're going to be transitioning through a Class D airspace, which is um, Fairbanks International. So we'll get a transition, and then we're going to head west. Let me pull up the map so you can see where we're going to be headed here. Because I have vfr map up and ready for you so you can get a look at that i'm gonna pull that up right now all right so here's currently where we are sitting right now i think we're actually don't know if this is updated let me see See if I can get that to connect. I think maybe the program closed out. Here we go. There it goes. I was going to say, because we're not on that side of Fairbanks. We are right here. As you can see, Fairbanks is here. For those who don't know Alaska at all, Fairbanks is more into the central area. You have Anchorage down here. We're going to be flying out of Fairbanks. Very adventurous place this time of year. And we're going to be heading west and here is fairbanks international airport so we'll be mostly on a vfr flight departing out of this um little airport here and heading west following this river now this is the tanana river and it's mostly frozen at least in the simulator so we've got our skis equipped we're going to be following this river some some may say IFR. It's an old you know old aviation funny term to say IFR means I follow rivers. Well, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using the river to guide our way today to Ninana, and then probably taking yeah the Ninana River. We're going to turn left at that river, and because the weather is so sketchy, we're going to be using the river as our guide. Which is a very common thing to do. And at some point, we're going to break away off of here and find a cool place to camp and actually set up camp and have a fire with our airplane. So it's going to be pretty neat. And I've got all the survival gear that we need. I'll talk about that in a minute when we come down to the airplane. So I just wanted to give you a lay of the land here of the map. And then we're going to finally um, end passing Denali National Park absolutely insane and then come down to um Takitna, which is where we're going to end the stream and that's a two hour flight without stopping pretty much and this is where we're going to be ending the stream and if if i have time i'll go a little further we'll take a look at the dr seuss house which is a famous landmark in alaska that looks like a house that would be out of dr seuss so that could be fun and that's just south of there where we'll be ending so i've got a great adventure for us let's get rid of the map and go back to our live time and live weather here in alaska 
just want to welcome everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm very excited to take you on this flight. And we'll have a look around here. I can see the clouds moving in. It's pretty moody, pretty moody, pretty dark. And I'm going to come down to our airplane. Without further ado, let's get started. As you can see, we have a few planes here on the ramp. We've got a Cub. We've got a Cessna. We've got a 208 here with some couple guys hanging out in the cold. Looks like they're checking the tire pressure. And then we have our beautiful bush plane right here. The Beaver, I already have the door open because we've been, of course, loading equipment. Now, I don't have the first person add-on. I'm waiting for them to probably do that default in, in the sim um, when they add it so that it's not an actual add-on. So what I do is I just, and I might get it, I don't know, but what I do is I just do drone speed one and I put the rotation to about 60 and that will give you kind of a first person experience walking around a little bit. You could do a drone speed of two maybe, um, so it's not quite as slow. But what's really neat about this airplane is it comes equipped with a cover. As you can see, I have it covered and a tie down and I'll show you a couple other little things that they did in here with the lock. So we we're just loading up our equipment. Let's talk about some of the equipment I'm going to be bringing for this mission of surviving and camping in the Alaskan wilderness in the cold. Some of the things that you'd bring on a trip like this in your beaver airplane would be, of course, like a safety whistle. Um, you would want a, a portable locator beacon, an emergency ELB. Um, maybe even a backup one so that if something happened you could alarm that and people would be able to hopefully come find you um, We're also going to have what we need to start a fire. We're going to have a smoke signal You could even have a flare gun with you. We're of course going to have a knife. We're going to have waterproof matches That's right waterproof and um, Maybe some candles Candles are a great idea could also have some light sticks we could have uh, a, a compass like a standard compass um, what else we got for our shelter and protection if we're going to be camping the night we're going to want to have our tent we're going to want to have space emergency blankets um could do some sunglasses a bandana you could have some insect repellent you're of course going to want some bear spray bear container some i know it sounds like a lot but some of this stuff is like pretty lightweight we do not want to attract any grizzly bears First and foremost, it's Alaska, but most of them should be like hibernating at this point, and um, or at least that's the term for it, even though it's called torpor. But they're in hibernation this time of year, and they, but you know, you still got to be careful. They, they can come out of of wherever they're um, sleeping, and we definitely want to have some bear spray with us. You could even have a gun; it's not a bad idea. Um, and then I'm not going to go through the whole med kit, but of course you're going to want a med kit for water and food. We're going to want a way to uh, we could bring some water with us or a water uh, filter. We could filter from the river. Uh, I would assume not all of them are frozen over and there's probably some running water there. Got to be really careful not to fall in it. Sorry, just let me take a break. Have a sip of coffee. What else we got on our survival kit? Um, something to write with. Um, let's see. Some miscellaneous stuff here. It'd be good to bring some rope, maybe. You know, whatever kind of food you want and whatever you want to stay warm, basically. Fire starter, like I said, and some wood, an axe. So those are just some of the things that you're definitely going to want to bring. And if you can imagine, that's what we'd have in here. I have the back seats out. Then it's set up to carry some things. So looking into the cockpit, I love that they also included this. And we have this option from our iPad over here to change some of these things. Right now I have the yoke belt on. This is a lock for the yoke. Just for when it's sitting here static. Then there's also a rudder lock down here. As you can see, this piece of metal here. That is a rudder lock that we will be taking off here shortly. 
and then you have the cover so let's go ahead and get started with taking off the cover and we'll hop in um, to the cockpit after we take that off and all I have to do is come down here to the iPad and hit um, where is it secure cover okay and that will come off now we can walk around and hop in the plane we're of course gonna inspect the plane on the outside to save time I'm not gonna do that but normally of course you'd go through the full inspection which could take 20 30 minutes even um, and we have some skis because there is snow on the ground everywhere in Alaska right now so we have our skis and let's see oh got to open the door which we can also do on here okay we got the door open and we're going to um, we'll just click off the tie downs as well once we once we you know pretend like we get in and because you can't do it from that view you have to be in this view to do it so we'll untie them wow look at the ice on the window so interesting wow okay so we are also going to take off that yoke belt i don't know if you can click that you can click that that's cool and then we'll take off our rudder lock and that's where we want to be to start out okay now we're going to go through the process of starting up and we're going to get this adventure started very exciting flight very dangerous conditions this is like a dream come true leisurely adventure if you are an Alaskan pilot and you were to have a plane like this so pretty excited I don't I honestly don't even know what's gonna happen um, I just know we're gonna head west and follow the rivers and find a place to camp so let's get going over here in the exterior you also have a choice between a chrome and matte spinner I'm gonna do matte I have the skis attached I've got the GPS for our avionics. You can also go back to the old school analog radios if you want. But I'm going to do the GPS. And we're set up for cargo. So that's pretty much it. And then we're just going to get the airplane started up and uh, get our weather information from Fairbanks. That will give us the wind and decide which direction we want to take off. So to get started here let's go to where is my checklist I have kind of my own little checklist I made here where is it though oh okay perfect so we're gonna do the battery on let's turn that on I put this other other earphone on and the fuel selectors coming down to the fuel selectors we're gonna go to the rear tank at first and then for the magnetos we're gonna turn those to both let's hide the yoke just so you guys can see this for a second magnetos are already on both which is what we want and then we're gonna go to mixture full which it is I don't know why these things are already like this they shouldn't be not quite cold and dark but that's fine mixture full and we're going to crack the throttle, maybe about a fourth. We're going to prime it over here, which is kind of hard to see. I'm going to slide over a little bit. The primer's right here. We're going to do that four times. And then we're going to come to our wobble pump, and we're only going to do this once. We only need to do it once. Wobble pump. All right, beautiful. And we are just about ready to start up, except we want to put our propeller lever all the way forward and let's go ahead and start this this baby up and just make sure am I missing something probably missing something is this is this emergency cutoff down? That should not be down. Is that what was doing that? Huh. Let's try that now. Alright, I know I'm missing something here. What did I miss? Do I need to do the fuel boost to start up? Let's try that. Okay. 
Yeah, that was on on the first attempt. Mixture is full. Really should be. I mean, we. Unless we. Yeah, magnetos are good. Everything's good. Let's make sure we have fuel. Yeah, we've got fuel. And also, I added weight already, just so you guys know. Um, that also should be on. Parking brake. I added some weight so we could pretend like we're carrying our equipment. What is preventing us from starting right now? Let's try a different tank. supposed to be up? No. Let's turn that back on. What are we missing here? I'll just go to the checklist. We've got throttle half inch. Maybe we want to decrease the RPMs. Yeah, we want to have that on decrease, okay. All right, let's go. So master's on. We have fuel selector. We want that to the rear. We've got throttle cracked. We've got ignition both. We've got primer four. We did the wobble pump to five PSI max. Are we going, are we going above our our max for that, that shouldn't matter. Should be good. Starter on. Interesting. I don't know what's going on. Oh. This thing does not want to start up. Interesting. We're having some engine problems here. Alright, let's see. Do we have an option to go to like cold and dark on the iPad? Oh wow, you can hide you can hide the tablet. Interesting. I guess this is the only options it give you gives you with the iPad. I'm gonna try shutting everything down real quick and we'll try this again. that airplane not want to start? This is very interesting. Is it because it's so cold? A different tank. Very interesting. Okay, so we're going to just reset this and see what happens because it should be starting. Unless I, I mean, I could try priming it more. It's because it's so old. It does not want to fire. Perfect. Okay, so this was supposed to be open. That's what it was. Interesting. Alright. There's... I... I don't have...
have this airplane like super well memorized. So we, we got it figured out though. It had something to do with the emergency cutoff, I think is not supposed to be up. Okay, so up cuts that off. All right, got it. All right, so we're good now. I guess that's all it was. Again, this airplane was not quite cold and dark when I got in, and I'm not sure why, because I wasn't just flying it, I just loaded in, so. Anyway, um, let's get going. Now that we have the airplane started up, let's uh, check out our lights here, and now we can go fly. I'm gonna turn the fuel boost off. See the sound of that beautiful radial engine. Lights going on, beacon's gonna go on, and uh, of course, uh, radios are already on. Uh, we'll just pretend like I turned those on after startup, and I'm gonna turn on, yeah, the map light. We could dim that a little bit just because. Oh no, that's we want the map light, no, we want the instrument light, and then I can dim these because it's pretty dark out. Uh, just with all the clouds and everything. So we'll probably use some instrument lights and then let's go Let's leave pedo heat off for now um, Strobe we can go ahead and turn on There's not really anyone here at this airport and we're about to take off landing lights coming on And now let's get the METAR for Fairbanks so we can get our wind check You never want to be like at closed throttle on this airplane. I'm going to leave it to about here. And we'll leave the parking brake on for right now. It is very, very cold, so I'm going to also turn on the um, cabin heat. We've got the carb heat on right now. I don't think we're going to turn that on at the moment. But the cabin heat would be nice. go. It's crazy how much the windows are frosting up. So in this, in these conditions, you would also want to let the engine warm up quite a bit. So it's good that we're just kind of sitting here letting the engine warm up because that's very necessary right now. And now let's get the conditions in Fairbanks. So if I type in in the chat, what's up, Ian? Thanks for your help. Appreciate the effort um, for uh, trying to problem solve that with me. It was the whole time. It was just the emergency cutoff. I guess I had that in the wrong position. All right. So if I type in weather Fairbanks, we're going to compare that to the METAR. Now that's just going to give us more of a basic weather conditions not really um, aviation weather but let's see what what nightbot has to say about that now here's the METAR in front of me we've got uh, let's see decent visibility we've you know 10 statute miles which is good we've got a few clouds at 7,000 feet we've got scattered clouds at 8,500 feet we've got broken clouds at 11,000 feet so quite a quite a few clouds and we've got an altimeter of 2943. Okay, so let's get that correct. 2943. It looks like it's already around there. So, I mean, the other thing you could do is you could put that zero in some airplanes but we won't do that for this one we have quite a bit of ice on the windows so I don't know what's gonna happen with that 
hopefully warming up the airplane will help and um, get the carb heat and the cabin heat that's all we can really do and then the pedo heat we can just go ahead and turn that on now and I'm gonna turn off the so okay so I forgot to mention the winds winds are saying zero that can't be right zero knots no what does the weather here say from nightbot we have wind blowing from the west at zero so there is like no wind so we're good as far as I mean winds are pretty calm actually so let's go ahead and just taxi and take off in whatever direction we want we're gonna do one notch of flaps here <laughs> That is this lever down here, just so you guys know. I have it mapped to my joystick, so I have I'm able to adjust the flaps on my joystick, so that's how I do it. We'll do one notch. We're gonna be flying um, VFR right now, and we'll also request a transition after the run up for our takeoff because we're gonna be going right around just south of uh, Fairbanks International. And I'll just do that. I checked VATSIM. I don't think there's anyone on there. I'll just do that through the default ATC. Let's begin our taxi. Also want a control check. Can you open the window? No, it's just the door. Won't let me open the door. <laughs> I guess you can't do that while the engine's running. It just blows it back. I noticed there's some really good details in here. Like, I even saw that map shaking at one point and vibrating. So it's really cool to start to see some really realistic effects with that. Oh, getting a little bit of snow outside. So that's neat. Let's put the parking brake off and begin our taxi. Oh, winds are calm. Look at that sock. Some cool views here, too. I really like this one. And then I've got a couple of... I'm going to go... I'm going to take off. Um, well, actually, you know what? Let's go this way. Yeah, we'll, t we'll come down here and then turn around and take off the other direction. So, a couple of fun facts about this airplane. The de Havilland Canada DHC-2 Beaver. It's a single engine, obviously a high wing and a prop driven stole airplane. So short takeoff and landing airplane, great for bush flying. It's got a radial engine, which is awesome. Sounds beautiful. We can check our cylinder temps as well and um, it's got a lot of utility roles it's played like cargo passenger hauling crop dusting aerial top dressing um, general civil avi uh, civil aviation purposes some people uh, have said this is like arguably the best bush plane ever built in 1947, the first flight of the aircraft took place, which received the designation DHC-2 Beaver. Uh, it took place in Downsview, Ontario, Canada. De Havilland named the new bush plane the Beaver because the animal is known for its hard-working nature. So there you go. That's how it got the name. Uh, it was flown by a World War II flying ace, Russell Bannock, on its maiden voyage. In 1948, the first production aircraft was delivered to the Ontario Department of Lands and Forests. The prototype was sold to Central British Columbia Airways and continued to fly until 1980, after which it was retired and preserved. In 1958, a Royal New Zealand Air Force Beaver played a supporting role in Sir Edmund Hillary's Commonwealth Trans-Antarctic Expedition to the South Pole. 
1987, the Canadian Engineering Centennial Board named the DHC-2 one of the top 10 Canadian engineering achievements of the 20th century. Then in February of 2006, a lot more recently, Viking purchased the type certificates from Bombardier Airspace, Aerospace for all the original de Havilland designs, including the Beaver. So Viking has the exclusive right to manufacture the new aircraft. The company has stated its interest in the potential restart of production of the Beaver. I'm not sure if they have since, but like I mentioned before as well, this is one of Harrison Ford's favorite airplanes as well. So if it's good enough for him saying it's one of his favorites and he's flown the Millennium Falcon, then obviously it's one of the best airplanes. just seems like a tank so we're gonna circle around here and get ready for our run-up stop right here and put on the brakes that will also kind of complete our brake check and then we're gonna want to do a controls check so let's check our ailerons make sure those are working hopefully we have some some icing disappearing on the windows here it looks like it may be letting up a little bit we're gonna want to check our elevator control Make sure our controls are free. Let's toggle the yoke back. If I can get that back. Where is it at? Where is it at? There it is. This is pretty cool as well. For those who don't know, this yoke is able to switch over to the other seat. So it has a mechanism that can swing over to the right seat if you want to fly from the right seat. It's pretty cool. I've always loved that design on airplanes. Now we're going to do our run up. So this is the one thing I will refer to the checklist for. We'll actually, cause they have a great checklist here. Why not use it? You use it in real life when you're flying. So this is like very important for our ground tests. Yeah, this is it. We want to do back on the controls. We are selecting the fullest tank. We're going to come up to 1750 RPM on our throttle. It's about right there. And then let's check a drop in RPMs for our magnetos. So here goes one. I can hear a little bit of a difference there. Wait, that's not, no, that wouldn't be 1700. We need to come up to, I'm sorry, much more than that. I was looking at the wrong one. I was looking at the man pressure. We want to be right about here. Perfect. Okay, now let's drop a mag. Perfect. I can actually hear the loss in power as well. So not only can you see it sometimes, you can also hear it. And let's go back to this one and then back to both. Perfect. Let's check the carburetor heat. That's the cabin heat, not the carp heat. Huge loss of uh, RPMs there. So that is working. Okay, and so that's looking good. And we want to check our temps. Temps are looking pretty good right now. Cylinder temp is looking good as well. So we are good to go fly on this adventure and before you know what I'll probably do just because of the way that the ATC works on here is contact uh, Fairbanks International like right when we get in the air we want to be at the altitude that we want to transition at before we contact them even though in real life you might want to consider contacting them before you even take off here because it's so close to the class D it just depends on where the class D is if you want to figure that stuff out you can go to like um, what's that website for the charts aeronautical charts 
for the USA. Um, you can do Sky Vector. So here, I'll show this to you guys right now. Might as well. I'm going to be as real as possible about this. So let me pull up Sky Vector. Uh, I was like, it's not giving me, it's not giving me the option, but it is, where would it be? Skyvector.com, come on. Let me go back to VFR map for this. I'm gonna add a source here in Streamlabs, do window, window capture, sky vector, so you guys can actually see the chart we would be looking at if we were really flying here it is perfect okay so now you can you can see what I'm seeing here let me drag this down 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 come on come on perfect All right, now we have a sectional here. Let's go up, we're in California. Let's go up to Alaska, Fairbanks, all the way up here, wow. Here is our Fairbanks International. So this will tell you where the Class D is, which is right here. We're actually at this airport. So we're good to, um, and this is a private airport we're at, as you can see. And we are good to transition we just give them a call and let them know we're going to be transitioning through their airspace because we're going to follow, we're going to fly down south to this river and then follow the river. And then you have this um, class D also extends out this way. So we are like, basically we'd want to be telling them what we're doing in real life right when we take off. but. We won't quite be as realistic on the radio today, but I'll do. I'll at least request that transition. So, here we go, everyone. We're finally going to take off and go on this camping adventure. And now that the engine is warmed up and everything's warmed up, look at the ice. It is gone from our windows. Yay! Which makes it a lot safer to take off. We've got some snow. This is just going to be beautiful. So... Flaps are set, everything is set, let's do this. sketchy. <laughs> I would imagine that does not actually look like that in real life. It's probably a little more room. You know, the simulator doesn't always simulate things correctly in here, but I do have the Orbix Alaska scenery downloaded. So that should give you guys the best view possible of Alaska on today's adventure. And there is our takeoff. also of course have our GPS down here we can keep an eye on that we're gonna want to immediately make a right turn away from the class D and then back down toward the river let's come back to about 30 inches well let's see we'll do about yeah cuz we're really not gonna climb very high because of the conditions we want to stay pretty low which I like anyway for the scenery um, so I mean we really could just be like cruising right now I like to go to about 28 and a half inches for that and then we're gonna come down to maybe about 1900 1950 rpms and just see how that goes and then our flaps are gonna go up to the cruise position and we'll start trimming the airplane out, which is going to be up here for your trim. 
I also have that map to my joystick. So I am playing around with the elevator trim right now. I'm just We're just going to find a nice cruise. I like the sound of that for the engine in this airplane. And let's turn off our landing light. All the other lights we are going to keep as is. Beautiful. Let's check our temps. Temps are looking good. Cylinders looking good. This is just like a nice cruise speed in this airplane. Nice and easy on the engine. I'm going to keep turning around here. And we can always check VFR map if we want to check VFR map to really get a better view of things on the GPS. Good, good. We are flying. Let's see if we can zoom in here a little bit. Zoom out. There we go. I like that better. And that also gives you some of the airspace reference there as well. So right about here, I'm going to tell them that we're going to be requesting a transition. I'm going to go to ATC. And let's tune to... Fairbanks International. Whoops, that's not the right one. Come on. Quit changing on me here. PAFA. We're going to go to the tower. We're going to request a Class D airspace transition. Fairbanks Tower de Havilland, November Niner Tree Echo, is type de Havilland, two miles northeast of Tree 1 Alpha Kilo, 2,400 feet. Requesting transition. The Havilland November Niner Tree Echo transition approved. Report clear of Fairbanks Tower airspace. Maintain on navigation. Okay, so all we have to do is just report them when we're clear. We'll report clear to Havilland Niner Tree Echo. And so they must not be very busy right now. Also, this airplane has a great autopilot, which we're gonna, I'm going to take advantage of down here. We're going to turn on the autopilot. I'm going to turn on the heading mode. Now it's going to follow the heading bug, which I need to put back to this way. Keep turning. Oh, that just went crazy. Let's get that adjusted first before we hit heading. What is going on here? Turn off the autopilot real quick. <laughs> Keep things manual for a second. That's throwing us way off course. But yeah, I'll probably cruise at about 2,500. That's a good, good altitude right now. Look at this weather. It's so interesting. I'm so excited to go camping. Where's our heading bug? There it is. All right. Let's try this again now that we're kind of lined up with the bug here. Autopilot heading. Does it want to follow the nav mode? We don't want nav. We just want heading. Not sure why it's trying to turn all the way around. It's not... It's not where we have the heading bug set. You're going the wrong way. <laughs> I don't know what the deal with that is. That's fine. We don't have to use it. It was working before when I tried it. Maybe it would at least hold our altitude. Altitude on 2500. Still wanting to like bank way left. 
What is the deal with that? If I just let go, the autopilot's like making a hard left. Shouldn't be doing that. I don't even have a heading mode selected. Very strange. I'll just like not use the autopilot then, that's fine. I'll let the trim be my autopilot. It's more fun to fly the airplane anyway. All right, we're gonna turn a little more this way. I can see the river now. I'm gonna climb back up to 2,500. So we dropped a little bit. This is a pretty good direction right here. Now let's go through our cruising checklist. Can't be too careful in these conditions. Cruising checklist, we're just going to have flaps cruise, which they are, cruise and power RPM, which is set, mixture set. That's pretty much it. Pretty simple in this airplane. You're just keeping an eye on your temperatures. Come up on this a little bit. There we go. We don't really need to worry about the mixture because we are not climbing higher. Although, I wonder what altitude we're at right now, actually, in um, Fairbanks. Also, I want to change this to GPS. Let's look. So yeah, only 450 feet. I didn't, yeah, I didn't think it was very high, so probably don't need to really mix with the uh, mixture too much. I mean, we could see if we hear an increase coming down on that, but I doubt we will. No, nothing. And here is our river. Let's check out some of the other views. We've got Trustful Thomas over there, so if uh, anything goes wrong in today's mission, we give him a call. We can trust that he will come save us. This weather is epic. I love this fixed view that they have on here. There's the Tanana River, which we are going to be following west. Find our camping spot. I'm going to play a tune here. It's just going to set the vibe of today in Alaska. Let's see what we got. called Vision by Stephen Guthheins.
I may actually descend because of these clouds coming up here. It might go down to like 1500. But in reality, if I was going to make a change like that, once I've been in touch with the tower, I would need to let them know about it. there trying to stay below these clouds since we are VFR we do not want to fly into them but that's okay we're good going to stay a little bit lower. We are coming up on Fairbanks International, right? It's about right up here to our right.
So as soon as we get clear of their airspace, which we're going to be pretty soon, we're going to let them know we are clear. That's what they wanted us to do. And we're just going to continue following down this river. Just enjoying the scenery and Alaska. Let's check on our instruments here. We're now cruising at 1,500. And our temperatures are looking good. Cylinder temp is good. I'd like to try the autopilot again because I don't know what's going on with that. So beautiful. This river is just such a great tool for navigating. It's all you need. You know where this river is going, you know where you are. All you need is a map. Let's go ahead and let them know we're about clear. Fairbanks Tower de Havilland Niner Tree Echo is clear of the Fairbanks Tower airspace. De Havilland Niner Tree Echo Fairbanks Tower frequency change approved. All right, we've got our frequency change approved, so now we're good. We're just VFR. Looks like we got some better weather too now. Might be clearing up a little bit. How about that? All right, let's mess with the autopilot for a second and see what we can get going there. I want to try to get that working. I don't understand why it's not working. a little bit faster as well. Cover some ground. Get trimmed off. There we go. Just adjusting the trim. Where's our heading bug at? There we go. Get the bug here. don't know where it's... Oh, you know what? I think it might be wanting to follow the, the nav for some reason, but we don't have the nav selected. So that's what's so strange. I don't understand that. We don't have nav mode on. gonna let it do its thing and see what happens to be honest I don't under, I don't know where it's trying to go Let's see where the autopilot's trying to take us well look at the reflection of the clouds on the window that is cool okay, so it looked like it just wanted to turn around and now it's going to the heading bug Autopilots in this thing can be so weird. Is it... Is it following the heading bug? No, it's not. 
Is it is it trying to go to our? It's trying to go back to our uh, our course in the GPS, maybe. Very strange. I don't know what it is doing. I think it's trying to go to our course, which is going to take us to the airport we're ending at, which will take a while. Now, let me think about this for a minute. I literally cannot come up with a reason that it would do that. Um, shouldn't be taking us. Maybe now, maybe because I switched it over to GPS, it'll it'll follow the heading bug. I hit heading it just it goes doesn't follow the heading bug at all I don't know what is going on with our autopilot is it the CDI button Ian said it might be the CDI button I mean I've changed those and uh, it doesn't seem to have an effect on it I mean, really, heading mode should just follow the heading bug. So, I mean, last time I tried it, that's what it did. So I don't know what the deal with that is. Now that we've got some better weather, I'm fine with going this way. We don't really need to follow the river necessarily because we seem to be having some, some clear weather ahead. Wow, look at those clouds we're leaving behind right now. Wow. Pretty neat view. Let's look at VFR map, get a better idea of where we're at real quick. And not too long from now, we're going to land and find a place to set up camp. All 
Alrighty, so we are way over here. Okay, so we're gonna want to turn more to the west right now. That's fine. So wish our uh, autopilot would work for us and not against us. Very strange. I don't know what the deal with that is. I need, I'm pretty certain I'm doing it correctly, so it's fine though. We don't have to use it. Turn to the west, we're at 2,000 feet. Looking good, sounding good. Some little mountains up here. Let's see Denali. can't quite see. I don't know if that's part of Denali or not in the distance, but it's definitely that way. Way more clear weather here. here. Let's get nice and low and go between them. Look at how, uh, how much powder is down there. It's so powdery. I am running the beta version, by the way. I opted in for the beta, so I was hoping to get a little more performance out of it. But pretty soon, I am trying to get a new computer, and I cannot wait because I am so ready to run this a lot smoother and stream it better for you guys. I'm like barely cutting it right now with my specs. Such an awesome airplane, and I love that they have it on floats because a lot of people are flying floats in Alaska, and then in the winter they'll put on skis. I'm definitely going to be doing some float plane things as well when it's not so wintry and icy.
All right, let's head more to the west to get out toward these mountains. Get back to the river, and that's where we will find a place to camp just on the other side of the river. At least that's the plan. So I'm going to pick up some speed here, hopefully make up some time. Climb up to about But we are in some way nicer weather now. We got away from all those low clouds. So it's a lot less sketchy over here. So that's nice. leveling off here around 2,500 just playing with the trim get us leveled off let's come back to about 28 and a half here and about 1950 here that's good for our cruise looking pretty good right there no autopilot today but that's fine I don't know what's going on with that oh they have the tensions here that's pretty cool god what a neat airplane got two med kits here one per person If you guys have any questions let me know or you want to talk about anything this is the place to do it there are no dumb questions other than that just sit back and enjoy look at the scenery look at where we came from oh, it was more that way Serious cloudy conditions down there. Oh, I can see Ian. Ian might be coming up to join. Maybe we'll do a formation. That's cool. It's good to see someone flying along. When I was streaming about a year or two ago, I, um, I had like definitely a little group going, so hopefully we'll get that back. Wow, look at this. So, as I mentioned before, I do have the Orbix Alaskan scenery overhaul, and it is pretty gorgeous. Definitely recommend it. I really love Alaska, so to me, like, I don't usually buy the scenery packages there's so many of them and I don't really have much space on my computer right now maybe when I get a new computer I'll get more of them but Alaska was one that I was like okay I'm definitely going to be flying in Alaska quite a bit I will definitely invest in that it's so gorgeous it's like why not see Ian back there I was getting sloppy with my heading
coming up on a river here. This is not our river that we want to f uh, follow or cross. This is a smaller one. Our river, I believe, is going to be on the other side of these little mountains. come back down. I get sloppy with my altitude in my heading when I start looking around playing with camera angles and I don't have autopilot. I do love this view. This is a really cool view. Also notice that they let you do sort of a wear and tear option on your airplane now, which I really like. Being able to set it to where there's some wear on the airplane looks a lot more realistic. So I thought that was a really neat thing that they added, I noticed. I don't know, honestly, that these like, um, rivers would actually be completely frozen over, especially the bigger ones. I wouldn't expect them to be. Hey, Brett, how's it going? Oh, you just can't go wrong with this airplane. It's actually one of my first times flying it. So I'm pretty stoked. I'm really, really loving it so far. Last stream, we were in a twin beach. I was in the A320 before that. So really, really neat. And uh, it's been awesome getting to fly some airplanes that I'm actually really interested in. And they've been coming out with more airplanes that I really want to fly. The DC-3 I'm stoked about, but um, that's a whole, nother, a whole nother ball game I need to really study up on the DC-3 before I start streaming it so there's just so much to learn and that's what I love about aviation it's like you really never stop learning and just when you like when you think you have one aircraft dialed down and you get bored of it or something then hop into another one and it's a whole other machine and you, there's just so much to learn I think winds are pretty calm, so I'm not going to worry too much about the shears um, or crossing at 45 degree angles here. Brett, I love that you mentioned that because I completely agree. Although I do enjoy some, some airliner streams. I'm much more interested in the bush flying as well and trying to come up with some different bush flying scenarios and missions. So that's the goal, to just get more, more adventurous with missions and maybe even like delivering metal, medical supplies to game reserves in Africa, things like that. And uh, I mean, that's why I keep putting the vote up on my YouTube community page. Here's a link to that because the vote's already up for next week. So that really I come up with a, a few different things and the, the people get to decide, you know, the majority vote gets to decide what I do. But I completely agree with you. I'm way more interested in general aviation and bush flying. Yeah, and gliders. They, now that now they have gliders on here too. So yeah. All right, where are we? Okay, so we're still a ways out from 
getting back on course to the big river. We're gonna keep crossing over these mountains until we get back to our river and then we're going to head out to the Denali wilderness and that's where we're going to be camping toward the Denali wilderness. So we're gonna keep heading west here but I also want to steer clear of these clouds because that's pretty sketchy around the mountains there so we're gonna stay to the left of that for now headed about you know southwest south southwest Aquatic, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by, man. Welcome, welcome. It's never too late to join in. Oof, this is beautiful. I don't know if, um, Ian has been catching up or not. Maybe I'm going too fast for him. Ian, you could go into slew mode maybe and, and catch up if you want. Uh, server is, I need to add that as a command, Brett. Server is USA East. I'm on the East server because I am in Florida. But really, I'm in Alaska right now. Look at these mountains that are starting to appear. Woo! So cool. Let's keep heading this way. And we have obviously been climbing because we're headed over some elevation here to get back on track to the Ninana River. We we're trying to make it over to the Ninana River. It is somewhere on the other side of these mountains. Oh, nice, man. All the way from Australia to Alaska. That's cool. Well, good morning to you. It's a little later in the day, more like early evening for me here in Florida, but I've got my de mostly decaf, decaf uh, coffee. Yeah, man, I'll definitely put the Yukon on uh, one of the votes. Actually, I'll add that right now. That is a huge territory. Turn up my lights a little bit. Gonna lean out the mixture a little bit. So we're still climbing. Probably going to cut to the west here and that'll take us right to the river so I'd like to get back down to that lower elevation and just and just follow the river it's safer so even though I see some clouds up here I think we'll be fine to stay below those it looks like that won't be a problem Got to keep an eye on this weather. I mean, it's Alaska, so anything can happen. Way more clear, it looks like. Well, really dealing with these conditions. Like, we're kind of surrounded by them. Just got to stay low. Plenty of places to land here.
How are we doing on our fuel? I'm gonna switch to the center tank here. Or actually, we'll go. We don't really have anything in the front. We're gonna go center tank here for now. It's like there's a little runway over there to our left somewhere. Little strip there. All right, this should get us to the river much, much faster. We're headed directly west now. I can see it, I think even on the GPS. This river right here, yep. There's a blue line there. So we're getting close to it. See the river ahead we're gonna cross over the river and go find a place to camp nice and isolated as if we're not already I agree there is so much beauty and peace in Alaska it's unfathomable really 
And if this is the closest I can get to it right now, then that's great. There's our river. I don't know if it actually, I don't think this river would actually be frozen. It's a pretty big river. I mean, I don't know. If anyone's from Alaska, you tell me. But I just, I don't think this is being rendered completely accurately. I just don't see a river this big being frozen right now. Now we're back to IFR following rivers so this is good this is where we want to be we're headed back toward the Denali wilderness I'm gonna kind of break away here in a minute um, and head out towards some mountains find a good place to camp I mean there's so many to choose from Coming up on an airport right here. Yes, I am flying with live weather and live time. Yeah, I don't think the river would be frozen. They're just not. I, when it comes to like water freezing, they haven't really figured that one out very well yet. The folks at Asobo, they're doing a great job. It's only a matter of time. Things are just going to keep getting more and more realistic. Who knows? At some point, maybe we'll be able to land and then go fishing or canoeing, incorporate some other things. This is, I love that this airplane comes with floats and then it has a canoe on one side of the floats. So it'd be really cool to be able to like land in a lake that's not frozen and actually then switch over to the canoe and canoe around, maybe do some fishing. I just, I would expect that's where things are headed in the future here for Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's going to become even more than just flying. Although, flying is first and foremost the priority. Playing around with the mixture there, see where that needs to be. Other than that, we're looking pretty good, although the visibility is pretty iffy up here.
coming up on an airport here. Probably a Class E. Or is that a Delta? No, there's no way. I gotta look at the, the chart. That's not, there's no way that's a busy airport. Maybe in Healy? Healy River Airport? That's gotta be Echo. Well, just for fun, since we're gonna be passing over this airport, let's do a touch and go. Turn on the lights for the landing light here. Start slowing down. See the lights up ahead for the runway. Looks like the runway is maybe facing more to the west. We'll find out. Oh, that's Ian's plane blinking, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep, I got it. I got a visual. All right, we're going to do a touch and go here. By the way, it's a fixed gear, of course, so we don't have to worry about that. And our skis are good. Keep slowing down. I'm going to put a notch of flaps down. We're going to do a nice little touch and go here. I don't believe we have much wind to deal with. We'll see if the airplane is crabbing at all. down with some more flaps. Slip it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, winds are looking pretty good. I don't think we have that much room here, so... I'm going to try to set it down. Oh, there's a pretty good amount of room, but I was coming in a little hot. I don't have a grip on my, on my pedals right now. That's why I'm all over the place, so like, I don't have them in the right position. Oh, I gotta fix those. There we go. That's better. We'll flip it around and take right back off. Flaps to one notch. away from that hill. Still getting used to the pedals in this airplane. Kind of slipping to be honest. Like I would do much better out but he's on. Just go barefoot.
much better rudder control now. Okay. Sorry about that. I did. I was kind of all over the place there. This is not ready for my pedals at all, and that's very important in a tailwheel. the mixture wants to be around right there. That's what it's sounding like. Hey, there goes Ian. Coming up on the right rear quarter. Pretty sweet. So we're probably not going to be going into that. So I'm going to keep going this way for our camping spot because that would just be stupid to go into. We'll keep following the river. Flaps in the cruise position. Landing light's going to go off and the next place we land will not be a paved runway. Hey, any advice on what flight simulations are good for someone who wants to get into aviation? I would say either Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane. Does everyone agree? Um, DHC World, or DC, what is it? I have those mixed. DCS World um, is great if you love like warbirds and that kind of stuff. But if you actually want to get into aviation and flying in real life, you are going to want to consider Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane, one of those two, in my opinion. I would go with Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, but X-Plane is great as well. I think we actually want to keep going. Yeah, we don't want to go back east. Going, going down the wrong river here. That's gonna lead to nowhere. We want to go this way. Don't follow the wrong river. I mean, this is the way I don't want to go. Like, and in real life, you would never fly into this. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Like, mountains and IFR conditions do not mix. I think we might be okay though. I think there might actually be more visibility than it looks. And since we're on a simulator, we'll do it. Pretty questionable VFR conditions though right now. I think the best way to get into flight simulation is gonna be Microsoft Flight Simulator and like the Thrustmaster flight pack. You're gonna get all three things. You're gonna get a uh, stick, which could also be used as a yoke. To me, it makes no difference. They both do the same things. I've flown both in real life. They're an easy transition between one and the other. So it comes with a stick, then you'll get a throttle and you'll get pedals. You get Microsoft Flight Simulator and that's really all you need and a, a, the minimum requirements to run it. And you are good to go. With getting more into aviation and learning to fly, you can learn a lot so that when you get into a real airplane, you will be loads ahead of where you would be if you didn't flight simulate. Is this our river here? Yeah, this should be our river here. This is what we want to follow. Sketchy, but this is what we want to follow. And then hopefully we'll get a break out to the right toward Denali. But if we all, if we have to go a little east to uh, to camp, that's fine as well. Right now, I just want to get through this really sketchy section. So we'll see if there's a clearing, if we can come out of this. We still have some visibility.
We are coming up on Denali. So that is very exciting. Denali, I believe, Den Den like the Denali Airport. I don't know the official name of it, but it is right here on our right. So check this out. That is pretty cool. And just so you guys get an idea of where we're at, I'll pull up the VFR map for you. We have gone all the way from Fairbanks, made it all the way down to the uh, Mount McKinley National Park Airport now. So very, very cool. And from here, we will then shortly find a place to camp. So it is right below us right now. How could we come all the way here without landing at Denali? So let's do a quick landing. And actually, I'm going to record the replay of this because I've really been enjoying taking advantage of the replay feature here. If you turn on dev mode, you go to experimental, turn replay on. You can then use the replay feature. So all I have to do is pull that up when I'm ready, hit record, and we'll get to record our landing and then take a look at it. So that's fun. I'm going to enter a downwind here. We just slow down, and this is where we do our announcement. November 9 or 3 Echo is on a left downwind for a runway, blah, 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 whatever runway it is. I didn't look. Um, then we could just say touch and go. So we'd be on a common traffic frequency here. Yep, I know, I know. I got like full flaps. Starting to stall a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and start recording now for our replay. Need to speed up in this turn as well. Get too slow. Now we're on a base and we're going to be on a really short final here, again speeding up in the turn. Increasing the, the power in the turn. Now we can pretty much cut that off. Now we're coming in way too hot. I don't think I'm going to be able to get enough power out, so we'll have to do a go around. What I could probably do is just turn around and land the other direction, considering there's like no wind. Why we're doing this though, let's check the wind for Denali. Flaps back to climb. That's actually high enough. We don't need to climb that high. This thing will climb. Let's see what weather Denali says. You can get a general idea of the wind here. So our runway is... I'm going to stop the recording. We'll restart that in a second. Our runway is north and south. So we got wind blowing from the north northwest. So we actually do want to land the way that we were just landing, but it says calm. It says zero miles an hour. So yeah, I'm not worried about it. We'll just turn around and we'll land the other direction since the winds are so calm. Very interesting that we have such calm wind. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna start the recording. This is looking a lot better.
little breaks just a little bit. Yep, I know. We're stalling because we're landing. Good. Then we'll flip it back around and check that replay just for fun. It's fun to watch your landings from a different perspective. Let's just leave that going right here. I'm going to flip it around and turn on the parking brake. Pedals are much better now. It's so weird landing a tailwheel with calm wind. It's almost harder than having a crosswind. <laughs> Leave that there. And now if I come up to replay, I can hit stop and then play. Whoa, got some crazy sounds there. Looking for the drone camera. There it is. Give me some more speed. We'll come back to the airport that we're landing at. Not really sure how to use like the best way to like view this but here we are so that's okay so I what I probably want to do is lock the camera on it find like a good follow so any anyway to reset that all you do is Hit pause, hit stop, hit play again. Or, I'm sorry. Stop your camera track recording. And this is how I made that Top Gun video, by the way. If you guys haven't seen the Top Gun intro I made, this is pretty much how I did it. We'll hit stop, we'll hit play again. There we go. Now I can move the camera wherever I want and watch this landing from a different perspective. So we could even come like under the belly, that could be cool. Let's watch that. shabby pretty neat pretty neat all right so when you're done with that you can exit replay mode here you hit stop on the camera track hit stop on the timeline then we we're back to where we were except it moved us a little bit that's fine we we'll to turn back around here oh that was parking brake on take off again now we're going to be going to set up camp so thank you guys for staying tuned i know these live streams are a few hours long it's just how they are so um it's just fun and we'll go set up camp now for a little bit and then end this in talkeetna which was the plan so we're pretty much on course for our plan here rpm's full mixture full for takeoff Full power. Again, you can do the same thing for takeoff if you want to record the takeoff. if I do the replay and I'm in the air and then I come back to it so let's find out if I want to watch that takeoff and a little different perspective here
Beautiful. So now I will stop that replay. Oh, it looks like it did stay paused for me in the air, so that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted, so that worked out, and that's how you do that. So now we're getting into the Denali Wilderness. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to, first of all, put our flaps up. Well, we'll leave them in the climb position because we're going to be climbing here. We got some higher elevation ahead. But yeah, now I'm going to be finding a good camping spot. So we'll see what happens here. I'm going to stay close by the river so we don't get too off track and into a situation that we can't get out of. I mean, we could potentially climb pretty high in this airplane. Maybe even like above some of these clouds, but I'm not going to do that because we have calm winds and just seems like a sketchier idea. So here's our map so you guys can get a better view of that. This was the airport we just landed at here. That's Denali. Oh, there's the Mount Healy Overlook. Cool. So now we're really entering into the Denali Wilderness. Denali National Reserve Preserve down here. You have the National Park, the State Park. We're making our way down to Tok, uh, Tok Eatna, Tok Eatna, and somewhere in here we're gonna find a place to camp. That's the plan. But yeah, it gets pretty rugged here, so we don't want to we don't want to get too crazy. We don't want to get too off course. That's why for the most part I'm going to stay along the river. River's just to my left. Might even have some water right there. Let's go into a little more of a cruise setting here. And flaps are going to go to cruise mode. Turn the landing light off, which it is, and get it trimmed out. Check our fuel tank. Probably we'll go, yeah, we'll keep it on rear for now. It's like the front's pretty empty. I mean, realistically, we would have probably gotten fuel at Denali if they have fuel there. Find an airplane, uh, finding, um, finding an airplane with fuel. I'm sorry, an airport with fuel. And when it's so dark, you can hit Alt L if you want to use your flashlight. That's always nice. Headlamp. It's another thing that you take with you. So it's time to be on the lookout for a good place to land. Winds are calm, not much of a factor right now, which is very different. Something that I was not expecting. Not having much wind.
could be pretty cool to set up camp on top of this ridge right here that we're like crossing over right now that could be a pretty cool spot trying to get a better look here yeah let's do it this is a neat spot could really use our skis here So what we're going to do is we're going to land somewhat uphill. So I'm going to turn around and we're going to land so that we're going more uphill on this landing. Because it looked like the other side has like a pretty good incline for us there. We don't want to land downhill. This will be an interesting spot. Wow, look at that view. Oh, just gorgeous. And this is just like one really, really small part of Alaska. Bush pilot's dream. Look at the background. So beautiful. Look at that. Look at the lighting right there. Oh man, it's easy to get distracted here. I'm just gonna take a quick photo of this. There we go. Let's get set up to land here. Did I just lose our... No, I didn't lose our ridge line. It's right here. Okay. I'll try this spot out. If it gets sketchy, we can just go full power and launch off the other end landing light on laps are coming down I'm gonna pick a spot right in here perfect this is quite uphill so I don't know maybe not the best idea should slow down really quick though Oh, that is rough terrain. That is not a good idea. Alright, we're not going to camp there. <laughs> that is like really rough terrain. <laughs> Bad idea. We should land somewhere more flat. And that's the thing about the snow is like you don't really know what's under it, which is why you need to be familiar with with the spots that you're going to go. I mean, we could even land in the frozen river, even though it probably shouldn't be frozen. That, by the way, is like, this is not anything I would ever attempt in real life. Be much safer to land in like a flat spot like this and in reality you would know spots that are safe to land because you would talk to people about it. Let's find more of a flat area. Is this supposed to be a road? Yeah, we could even just land in the river. It's frozen. Frozen Lake would be cool to find. Let's see if there's a frozen lake around. Looks 
like there's like some frozen lakes this way, but it's up in the mountains. I don't know. I don't know if we should go up there. That looks way too high up. Looks like there could be some spots down here. I'm looking at the map. We're following along the Jorks Parks Highway here. There's a highway and a river, the Ninana River. And then it looks like there's a clearing down here in between, this is interesting, in between the George Parks Highway and the Alaska Railroad. The Alaska Railroad runs along this river. So that's pretty cool. Dude, you fell through a frozen lake last winter? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta say more. I need to hear that story. You weren't trying to get the sword of Gryffindor, were you? All right, this, this is it right here. See this clearing? That's what I'm thinking. Let's check out this spot. I don't love that it's by the road. That's the only thing. But that's okay. If we're going for safety, then this is what we want. Honestly, though, like, even this terrain could be too rough. Like, this looks super rough. Yeah, we're gonna be bouncing like crazy. Yeah, that's not gonna work. All this terrain is so rough. Look at that. Oh, you can see the river system there. I'm in slow mode, just so you know, it's the only way to kind of reset here. Oh, just picked up a lot of speed. All right, I don't really want to be that high up. We'll just turn around, and keep looking for a spot to camp. I think a frozen lake would be ideal. I mean, not ideal in real life. Like you would, again, you would need to know that it's not like that it's thick enough. You know what I mean? This is a very dangerous thing to do without having any knowledge on where to land. Hulk just subscribed. Welcome, Hulk. Welcome aboard to the channel. Got a lot of live streaming ahead. Good to have you on board. And welcome to Declan Lockett. Declan Lockett. Also streaming on Twitch now. I'm trying it out, which is kind of like a test run right now. But I'm going to start simultaneously streaming to Twitch and Facebook and YouTube all at once. So that'll be interesting. We are headed back south down the river. Still looking for a decent place to camp. The terrain is rough. I have no idea what's going on with that. Um, I don't know if that has to do with the Orbix overhaul or not. I don't know if that affects this.
but we're actually still headed toward our final destination so um, we're not really like off track here what I really want to do is find a frozen lake so I'm looking on the map right now seeing what is available in regards to that it looks like there's some frozen lakes coming up not too long from now and a couple more airports we have Cantwell we have Golden North Airfield we have Summit Airport we have quite a few airports over here this direction Then we have some glaciers to the right. You know what? Let's get adventurous here and let's climb and see, you know, if we run into some icing, we can always descend. Let's climb up. I'm gonna put the, the leave the fly the flaps and climb. And uh, see if we can really venture off the grid up and around this mountain to the right. Because I see that there could be some glaciers up there or frozen lakes. See if we can find a spot to land higher up. That would be super sketchy though. Oh wow. Someone's following. I think that might be a Twitch notification. I gotta work on those. I haven't even like really set that up. <laughs> I was like, what is that sound? Dude, you fell through a frozen lake and you were on your own? How did you get out? What were you doing? I have so many questions. So like, I want to head up this way so bad, but I can't wrap my head around. It's just not a place that you would like land and set up camp. So I'm just realistically, I can't, I can't do it. Um, just don't see it happening up that way. And you would never want to camp overnight there because weather's going to come in and you're never going to get out. So let's just, let's stick to like a spot down here be smart about this I'm gonna um, get rid of the flaps as we're coming up on some of those spots I found on the map looks like there's some frozen lakes up here by Summit Airport Summit Lake is up here even a little bit further I think maybe like one more song and we'll be there I'll play a song
GC, what is up, buddy? Good to see you again. It's been so long. I can't believe how long I stopped streaming. It's good to be back. Um, I really do see this being like more of the future of my YouTube channel. I'm still going to continue to make films and documentaries. But I just think this is where things are going realistic for me for YouTube, and I really enjoy it. So I'm also on Twitch and Facebook. Good to see you, man. It's been a long time. So, so good to see you back in the chat. Aquatic says he's going for a hike, had to climb out, get onto an island. Then he had to walk off the island onto the ice again towards shore. Then had to cross the lake again further down. Dude, you must have been like almost having hypothermia though at that point. Like, where were you and how did you survive the cold falling into a frozen lake lost his foam beneath the ice went back eight days later with the proper gear got it out tried it out and it works perfectly still does wow dude where was this insane all right here's some of these frozen lakes they, the ironic part is like they might even have water in them like what <laughs> wth right like, why would these have water, but then, like, some of these huge rivers are frozen? These things are just not being rendered properly, properly yet. They're just not. But, regardless, I think we could find a place to land down here. This little lake city here is what I was seeing on the map coming up on Summit Airport. And this is what I think will be a pretty good area to camp. So let's see what we can find down below. Okay, these lakes are frozen. For a second there, it looked like there was water in it. This should be a good runway. If it's not, and it's rough terrain, I'm sorry. I just, I can't win. I thought there was powder and there was rocks. Last time I thought we were landing on, like, grass and there was more rocks and we just keep crashing so hopefully we should be good on a lake frozen lake it's kind of what i had in mind anyway i guess the smaller the potential thicker the ice could be i don't know is that logic i'm gonna use this one right here Here we go, we are coming in for landing. I'm going to record the replay so we can watch it. It's kind of wild, so you really can't quite see where the ground is. And like, you really gotta be careful when you're landing on just a white ground, because you could s easily slam into it. I'm gonna add a little power here. So that doesn't happen. Because you really want to work your way down slow. When you have these kinds of conditions, it can really play with you. It's like the ocean. It's hard to, to really see where the ground is there. Alright, then we'll work it back. Yeah, I get it. We're stalling. We're landing. I don't know what the deal with that is. I don't know why it would... Like, is there a way to turn off the stall horn? Stall alarm if you're landing? Cool, we did a successful landing on a frozen lake. I was trying to do something different. Um, hoping that I could get away with, like, not landing on a frozen lake, but... That didn't work out, so here we are. This is where we're going to camp. I mean, this is a cool spot. We're going to get out of the middle of it. I would imagine it's a little safer to be away from the middle. You guys know more than me about frozen lakes, probably. I live in Florida and grew up in Florida. I'm just assuming it might be a little safer, like, toward the edge. Because it could be thicker than the middle of the lake, the ice. 
but I could be wrong. All right, we're going to come right here. We're going to turn off the avionics. We're going to put the parking brake on. And now we're ready to camp. Let's go ahead and shut off the mixture. Repeller, RPM. Uh, what else do we need to do? We could turn off the battery. We could just turn our lights off. And turn the mags off. Good. What am I missing here? Well, and then we could come. Up, we could do the uh, the carburetor. He wasn't even on. Wow. Turn all these off. Then we could do our shocks and tie downs. Oh, I forgot to have the shocks at the beginning of the stream. Okay, beautiful. Let's open the back door, get out our equipment. Um, and before we do anything else, let's watch that landing. Oh, did it not record? Oh, it didn't record the landing. Oh, well, we'll just skip that landing then. I don't know that it's that interesting anyway, because there's like no wind. I'm kind of landing on two wheels right now instead of one. All right, so for our first person view, I'm going to do speed to two. I will do follow mode off. We'll do rotation speed about 65 or so. That's good. And come down to about walking height. Good. Now we have just gotten out of the airplane. We're going to start getting our gear out. And what I'm going to do is use the camp out add-on so I got the camp out add-on this is how it works it's really really cool you can set up a campsite with your airplane you can even add other airplanes to it if you want so this is how it works I know I was just thinking about that it's funny how you hear water hey what's going on Pat I agree the Orbix mesh is nice Ooh, New Zealand and South America nice yeah I'd like to get those again I think when I upgrade my computer then I'll be interested in getting more of the scenery. That's the plan. I didn't consider landing on snow, rocks, and bumps, and frozen lakes. <laughs> yeah. Wonder how they all factor in all, all the good time of year temps, lake size, ice buildup. Yeah, I mean, I, I really, I just think that they're not really, like, quite simulating it perfectly yet. I mean, I would imagine it's an extremely hard thing to to model and especially figure out with live weather and all that so over time these things will just get more and more realistic which I'm really excited to hear I'm really excited for um, but right now I'm just just kind of like dealing with it in some cases and again in real life you'd never really land in powder when you don't know what's underneath it so that's fine we could do a frozen lake But yeah, I wonder how they factor that in as well, like logistically and technically into however their um, development works. It's pretty interesting. Aquatic was up in up north in Ontario when he fell into the lake. It was negative 20 Celsius late afternoon. Clothes were frozen solid, but I never really got cold, even with water in my boots. The walking was hard work, deep snow. Wow, man. I hope that that never happens to you again. That's pretty crazy. Garnet, I really appreciate uh, the comment on the travel films as well. I wish I could make more of them, but I just... That stuff is just so expensive to fund, so I don't know what's happening with that. I'll talk more about that once we set up camp. So here is the plugin. This is how it works. I've got my, my tools here. And then I'm going to pick a tent. I'm going to pick um, where I want that to be in relation to the plane. So we're going to put that, like, let's say over here. Then you can rotate it. And if you look out the window, it will be there. If we move it somewhere where I can see. I just can't see it right now, I think. But it's there. And I'm going to pick the color. I'll pick this one. Not sure exactly what show outside lamps does. I'm sure it probably puts some lamps on the outside. So we have the tent over there now. If I come out of here and let me make this smaller. And look over there, you'll see it. There it is. So pretty neat. Now, oh, I can actually 
I think I can do this outside of the airplane. Yes, I can. So that's cool. I'm going to move this a little further away. Perfect. And... Let's put our bear rug out. <laughs> the only difference between my pet and your pet is mine have three inch teeth and they weigh 400 pounds. <laughs> oh man, that's so funny they included that. Okay, so this thing would weigh way too much to take with you, but just for fun we'll put that out because that's hilarious. Now we've got our sleeping bag. You can even pick your sleeping bag color. I'm going to put that right on top of the tent. So it will then be inside of the tent and then we can rotate it, put it in the tent. Now, if I walk over there and look in there, you'll see it. Pretty neat. Looks like a warm sleeping bag too. Oh, look at that. We got our radio. We got some water. We got a flight bag. We've got a book. Got the lantern. Dude, we are set. Okay. Here's the view from inside the tent right now of the beaver. Just living the dream. Okay. Let's come back out and see what else we got. We can also put... Now, obviously we're on a frozen lake, so I'm pretty sure we wouldn't be having a fire on a frozen lake unless it was, like, in a barrel or something. Even then... That sounds pretty sketchy to me, but just because we're on a simulator and we had to land on a frozen lake without crashing, I am going to um, still pull out the fire because who doesn't love a fire? It's just like got to be a part of the camping experience. So we've got our fire over here. Beautiful. We're on our way to a beautiful campsite here. And then we're going to set up a chair. Let's do a vintage chair over here by the fire. Um, we could pretend like there's two of us. We could do another one. I believe you can even change the color of those. This is so crazy. You can do all this. Yeah, you can change the color. Interesting. Um, okay. And then we've got a hammock. We've got some firewood. That would probably be a little too heavy to bring in the plane, but we'd have some wood. I don't know if we'd have a log that size. Holding table. We got a windsock, so that's neat. I mean, we got to put that out just put that like over here take a look at the wind which there really isn't any nice and chill conditions and then let's get out our gas our camping stove here because we got to make coffee we'll put that right here And is there anything else we want to add to this? I mean, realistically, we probably wouldn't have a cooler or a table. We could have a waterproof bag. Put the waterproof bag here. Nice. We've got our camps. Now, it does kind of slow down the frame rate a little bit for me. So, again, just, just that new computer thing. Can't wait. I know exactly what I'm getting. I've already built it. And, uh, I mean, I've built it on NZXT. I'm just waiting to get the funds to order it. So here's the view from inside the tent. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And we'll just pretend like we're coming to sit down and enjoy the fire for a little bit. Getting kind of choppy here with the, um, moving around and having the fire going so like I was gonna say before with the travel films um, just so you know I think I'd like to keep making them but I think that the travel film thing is going more actual documentaries like the one I'm working on in Mexico 
Um, I am Mayan.com is the documentary I'm working on. If you guys go to I am Mayan.com, you can see this documentary that is to help indigenous Maya in Mexico. And I think my travels might be going more toward film festival films and the YouTube channel might be going more toward flight simulation and gaming. So that's the thought right now. Um, that's at least where my head's at right now. I definitely want to keep live streaming. I would love to be able to make a living live streaming. And so I want to just stick with it and be consistent. And hopefully we can all grow together here um, and get to the point where I can be doing this more often and, and go back to doing some giveaways and just the whole shebang. So we'll see. Um, but I have another story I'm interested in, in Kenya, Africa, actually. And so I may do some vacations that I may not even film at some point and just enjoy them and then have the filming, the actual filmmaking, again, be for like storytelling for film festivals and not necessarily for YouTube. So we'll see. Because I really realistically financially can do a lot more of this on my YouTube channel. It's just funding the travel films is like insane right now trying to um, afford to make them so anyway that's that that's where my thoughts are right now i'm just sitting in this chair in a frozen lake in alaska with the camp set up the bear rug is hilarious because again i feel like that would be so heavy that is not something you would take camping in alaska um, but I want you guys to just sit back and enjoy the sound of the fire for a little bit Just for a minute and uh, I think this will be pretty relaxing and just for fun I will take off the live time and we'll go to more of a sunset vibe and Then we'll go back to the live time but just for aesthetics We're gonna leave it right here for a second and I'll be right back in one minute I'm just gonna refill my coffee and enjoy sitting at this fire for a minute with you guys so just give me one second I'll be right back
All right, and I hope you've been enjoying the fire and the, the campsite we have going here. Pretty neat. I've actually been considering doing like some ambient scenes with this. I think it'd be kind of cool to, to offer some ambient scenes like this from the simulator where you could uh, put this on your TV and just enjoy having an aviation themed campsite in different places around the world. So that's another thought that I have. I love that they offer this as an add-on. I was so stoked to find out that someone had made this a feature. It is so cool to be able to go airplane camping because the expense of doing this in real life and the possibility of doing this in real life is not um, not easy to come by. I mean, hopefully one day I could in real life, but I just love that you can you can simulate this and really let the imagine, imagination run wild for people who love the outdoors. I mean, look at this scene right now, like on this frozen lake with this view and this sunset in Alaska with a beaver, like so, so cool. I'm, I'm probably going to have to make some ambient scenes like this. I can just put them on the TV and, and fantasize while I work at home. But anyways, we're going to clean up the campsite now and go to our final destination to end this stream. And um, let's see, we're not too far from Talkeetna. Is that something that I, I could realistically get to how long is I don't know how long that's gonna take but we'll start making our way that way and hopefully um, I'll have time to get there so it's pretty funny the way that they have you clean up the campsite here you get like points for cleaning up your your campsite so eco credits I don't really understand how this works but it's pretty cool and pretty hilarious First rule of camping is not leave anything behind and to leave everything as you found it. Our credit system ensures that you are not littering in your sim space, eventually ending up with persistent objects worldwide affecting performance. Well, that makes sense. That does make sense. So they they automatically disappear in, from the world after seven days unless they are visited. Um, you have a few options to manage global campouts. Please select one to free up eco credits so very interesting I'm going to clear all that will just immediately clear all 14 objects and just pack up camp so very neat utility um, what PC are you upgrading to I have put together a a PC here that is let's see this one is similar to what I'm gonna be getting I'm not sure if it's exactly the new link that I built but I can send you let's see here do I have let me see if I can find it in the chat for you um, what's going on what's going on chat where did I put this in oh you know what might be here Not sure exactly where I put that PC build. I'll have to, I'll have to post that in the Discord channel for you so I can keep the stream going. Um, but it's like an i9. The basics are i9, 3070 GPU. Um, it's going to be a 3070 Ventus Ti, and then I'm going to do. Um, 64 gigs of RAM. I'm gonna do two terabytes of solid state drive and I don't really know the exact specs on the motherboard and then some liquid cooling. I'll, I will um, send you a link though in the Discord channel. Definitely like start a chat about that on Discord because I'd like to get your opinion too if you know about PCs. All right, so we're gonna clean up the, first of all, let me go back to live time. I changed that just for the aesthetics and the lighting. We're gonna go back to real time now. 
let's get rid of our tie downs, our chocks, and start the airplane back up. I'm gonna turn on the battery. Fuel selector's good. Mixture forward, RPM forward, oh, we'll put it on decrease. Throttle slightly cracked. Then we'll go. I don't think we need to prime it. I think because we just ran it, we should be good. Parking brakes on. Mags set to both. Let's try starting her up. What am I missing here? I know I'm missing something. Do we need to do the wobble bump? for takeoff. set up camp and we can do more of that and some more streams if you want where we can set up multiple campsites we can camp for longer I know it took quite some time for me to get to that now let's go to our autopilot and see what happens with this go into nav mode so it does not want to follow our course okay now it says heading nav so that should work I'm gonna put the uh, flaps to climb although we really don't need to climb very much right now it's kind of nice to stay low put the flaps to cruise Are we gonna follow the course or not quite? It's not quite following the course. I don't know what is going on with our autopilot today. It does not want to cooperate whatsoever. Landing lights going off. That's totally fine. We'll go to manual. I've been doing much flying in real life not really man um 
really just trying to save money. I've been investing my money and um, starting an Airbnb situation. My wife and I just, we've been working for the last year on getting this Airbnb going. So we now have a Bambi Airstream that we're going to be using ourselves, but also Airbnb where people actually come, they don't hook it up and take it away, but they come and stay in it on our property. So I've been working on that for the last year and a lot of my extra money has gone to that investment. So I have not done a lot of flying in real life lately because of that, just because of the, the expense. But uh, I'm not giving up on it. I just took a break from it. Just financially. My pocket needed a break from it. Okay, cool. So, yeah, it's so strange that our autopilot's not working. See how fast we can get cruising here. A little hard on the engine. Try to listen to how the mixture is affecting the engine here. Good stuff. What's everyone's plans for Thanksgiving? I'll be going down to Orlando, where I'm from, and spending some time with family. Unfortunately, that means I won't be streaming on um, Friday because I'd like to start doing two streams a week. My goal is to stream twice a week instead of once. And uh, but I'll miss I'll miss the, sh the second stream this week because I'll be spending time with family in Orlando. Also going to see Devotion tomorrow night, which I'm really excited about. Even though the flying is CGI, they're flying Corsairs, and it looks like a great story. So I'm excited about that. I'll be seeing that tomorrow night in Orlando. I've been looking forward to that movie. That's that's one that I've been pretty excited about. If you guys haven't seen the trailer, look it up. It's called Devotion. Um, it's featuring a bunch of course heirs and African-American pilot who was going through the Korean War and a tough time with racism. So it looks like a great, great storyline and the leads are really good. So I'm excited about that. Climbing up pretty high here. This airplane will just climb. It just wants to climb. Yeah, we'll definitely reach our destination for Tokina. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm trying. We'll definitely reach it. I'm going to go ahead and get the winds, see what's going on with the weather there, actually. Come on, Nightbot. Find our weather in Alaska. Can you do it? 
put Nightbot to work. It's our little droid friend. Light snow, huh? 32 degrees Fahrenheit, right at freezing. Wind is blowing from the south southwest at zero miles per hour. Okay. There is no wind in Alaska, so that's been kind of nice. It's really like, besides the sketchy cloudy conditions, a pretty beautiful day in Alaska. For flying, I mean. Yeah, it's really not too bad. 32. Um, I would imagine in December it's going to drop a lot more. 32 degrees Fahrenheit, though. It's not bad. And again, we can just kind of pick our runway because there's been no wind. So let's look at the... Talkeetna Airport here. All right, so we've got runway 18 and 36. It's a 3,500 foot runway, asphalt, elevation of 358 feet above mean sea level. That's 109 meters. All right, so we got 18 and 36. Let's see, so we'll probably make a, how was that 36? Interesting, huh. We'll probably make a straight in final, honestly. Just make a straight in final on 36. Or I'm sorry, um, 18. Yeah, that makes sense. All over the place with my altitude right now. You guys haven't voted yet be sure to vote on the next live stream i love getting your vote because that's going to determine what i do and sometimes um if something you pick doesn't win it might show up again in another vote because i like obviously all the things that i pick that you're voting for are things that i want to do so don't be too bummed out if your vote doesn't win because it will probably show up again especially if it was like a runner-up Check our temps. Everything is looking good. We're definitely running out of fuel. We, ha we have enough in the middle tank though to make it. So we wanna go to that center tank. Just so you guys can see where we're at real quick. I'll pull up the map. We are right here following the river. We're going to be passing Denali State Park. Here's Denali over here. So it's on off to our right. And we're going to be coming down and landing in Talkeetna. That is where we're going to make a straight in for 1-8. That is where our final destination lies. And that is where we'll be staying in town tonight. Little town of Tokitna. So we have Denali off to the right over here. Let's get a look at it. Pretty freaking awesome. Oh, is it still saying the Discord? 
it shouldn't say oh it shouldn't say discord channel you actually it's to the YouTube channel let me fix that but it is the right link that is the correct link though for voting let me fix that right now if you guys want any more commands on here let me know because I'll I'm taking suggestions on different commands that you might want Let's dive down and follow this river. I don't make things interesting. Let's see if we can get down low here. What's winning in the vote right now? Bush flying the uncharted country of Malawi, Africa. Or the dangerous Madeira approach in the A320. Wow. Good with any one of those. Aquatic, sounds good, man. Have a nice dinner. Thanks for stopping by. I love that you're here. Can't wait to see you on the next one. This airplane is just so much fun to fly. Love to fly one of these in real life. I still don't think a river of this size would be completely frozen at this point. 32 degrees Fahrenheit? No.
All right, let's climb up and see if we can pick up some speed. If we go to a higher altitude, get to our destination a little quicker. Let's see how it goes. How's our fuel doing? We're getting low on fuel. I think we're gonna have like just enough to make it. It's not something you want to run out of in Alaska. We haven't really climbed very high this stream, so this is a good opportunity to climb up. Do something a little different. The clouds are cleared a little bit, at least it's a little more of a comfort level to climb. Quite a few people over here. Let's see where that gets us. It's good that we climbed actually because we're we're actually gaining a lot of elevation going this way. We needed to clear that ridge there. Now let's see where six thousand feet gets us. That might might get us there a little quicker. level off around here. Yeah, I'd like to come up with some more missions for bush flying, like and actually have more of an objective. 
flying medical supplies, rescuing. Remember in the older flight simulator how they like rescued a rhino? They had all these fun missions. So I wish I could come up with some some things like that. That's the the goal. To be a little more objective based. Search and rescue would be really cool. I remember in one of the old versions there was a search and rescue mission. Uh, we could even do some of the some of the new challenges they have for the 40th anniversary. I know they incorporated some of those old ones. Um, I noticed they did like the original mail route, and I think in a is that in a Steerman? I don't know. I have to I have to look into that because some of those challenges may be pretty fun to live stream. I love that they have some of those for the 40th anniversary. I noticed a couple of them weren't really working for me. But I will try them out again. Alright, we're just approaching 6,000 feet here. Let's see if I can trim this out. a pretty good cruise. We're getting much closer to Talkeetna. That's <laughs> so hard to say. Here's our map. Trying to get this in like a decent place to keep it up, but I don't know if it's really working. Yeah, basically we're just going to be following this river the rest of the way. We did not have autopilot this whole time, which I'm totally fine with. I like flying the airplane myself instead, but I don't know why it's not working. This very, very strange. The autopilot's not working. Last time I tried it, I just went to autopilot heading and was able to use the heading bug. Every mile, every 
in the river almost home to say I'm a little concerned about the fuel so we might have to just pretend like we got fuel at the last airport I mean we'll see what happens but in real life that's what I would have done That's what makes it exciting though, is everyone wants to see if I'm gonna run out of fuel or not. It's like, are we gonna make it there? If we have an engine failure, we're just gonna have to land somewhere, like probably in the river or somewhere in the you know, safest spot possible. We should probably climb up actually, because if we do lose our engine, we want as much time as possible to land. And then we're gonna have to call for help or maybe we'd have some extra fuel on board you know enough to get us to get us there we are cutting it really close cutting it really close with fuel we're like right at the home stretch though look at this Ooh, middle tank Really counting on that middle tank right now. Just chugging along. Are we going to make it on the middle tank? Probably got about five, ten minutes to our destination. Maybe five minutes. I think we're going to make it. This is why you follow rivers in Alaska. <laughs> it's like you can't see anything in here. Look how quickly you can lose your visibility. I mean, like back there, it's super clear. Here, you're right into IFR. I mean, it did say that it was a light snow in Talkeetna when we did the weather. I wonder what it's saying now. Probably the same thing. Is there a light snow? Conditions are cloudy. It doesn't say snowing anymore. Ooh, we are really cutting it close with this fuel though, guys. I don't, honestly, I don't know if we're going to make it or not. Do we have any left in the other tanks? Not really. I'm scared to switch to the other tanks. 
They're showing empty. So we're gonna turn, we're gonna start turning. You know what, not quite yet. But what I'll probably do is I'll make, we might be on more of a base. If we keep following the river, we're gonna be turning for a base for runway 18. Then we'll turn final. Honestly though, if I'm, I'm not putting fuel in this thing. If we run out of fuel, I'm gonna have to do an emergency landing with no fuel. use the emergency cutoff. I also like can't see anything anymore. It's a good thing we have this river to follow. We are getting so close to the airport we're probably realistically five minutes away now. Got just maybe five gallons of fuel left. Can't see shite. I'm gonna turn on the landing light. Let's get prepped for landing here. We do not want to mess this up because we do not have the fuel to do a go around. So we need to get this right. Also can't see a thing so I'm going to but I mean we do have a GPS so I'm gonna really start relying on that GPS right about now and make a left so that we're gonna be on a base for 1-8 these are some sketchy conditions all right let's slow down we're gonna be really using our GPS Turning a base right now. All right, we're now on a base for one eight. We're gonna be making a right turn for our final for 1.8. Let's not get too slow. Just keeping an eye on the GPS here. Sketchy conditions and running out of fuel. Oh my God, is it showing him? No, it's showing, okay, I think we got enough. We got like four or five gallons still, barely. That climb though is a dumb idea with low fuel. That burns up a lot of fuel, okay. I'm gonna cross over this uh, Talkeetna River here. There's a big section with a bunch of different routes, runoffs here, to give it a little power, get a little slow. We are in some nasty stuff right now. You would not want to be in this in VFR conditions in real life. But, you know, if you have to, it's possible. It's still possible to survive. Just gotta use your GPS to know what you're doing. 
All right, let's slow down here. We're going to be turning a final, and we're going to be looking for a visual for the runway. Let's see if we can find it. Hopefully, there, hopefully it has some lights, because we're going to need them. Back this way. You guys see it there? Getting pretty close to it. There it is. Okay, there it is. All right, when I cut the power. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's start the recording so we can watch the replay. Not cut the power all the way, but you know what I mean. This is looking good. I'm going to put down another notch of flaps. Got 3,500 feet here. Okay, a little bounce there. Yep, that's fine. Hit it a little hard there. Good, good, good. Dancing on the pedals. Perfect. We made it. All right. Let's exit the runway. Probably should have, like, be playing with the, the tailwheel lock as well. That is one thing I did not do. Next time I'll have to remember to do that. We're going to exit right here. Is that an exit? Can't even tell. Yeah, it is an exit. Is it? It's all snowed over. You gotta plow the ramp, folks. Why is the the taxiway not plowed and the ramp not plowed? I guess because it's snowing. <laughs> all right, let's taxi to parking, and we did it. We made it in the super sketchy conditions. As soon as we park, we'll check out the landing. We can turn off our landing light now. knuckle in that one it's just way too sketchy so in reality if you were to enter in conditions like that best thing to do is to turn around abort your destination obviously safety first but in a simulator it's fun to try put yourself to the test pretty simple like it's pretty much just following that river I knew where I was because of the river I knew the airport was by the river once we got close enough I could just use the GPS here is our parking we're gonna shut it down for the day so let's turn on the parking brake car peed up turn avionics off lights off heat heat off. Engine is powered down. Then we can put the mags off and battery off. Beautiful. Let's secure, let's do the yoke belt. Let's do the rudder lock. We're going to tie it down. We're going to chalk it. And we're going to secure and cover it. Boom. There you have it. We were parked. We made it to our destination. We went camping. We crashed twice <laughs> because of the terrain not really being snow. But uh, thank you guys so much for, for flying on this adventure with me. I had a blast. It was really, really... Uh, beautiful and adventurous and sketchy and just it was a thrill got it was also relaxing 
we set up the campsite for a little bit. I'm inspired to do some of those scenes that we could just we could just put on your TV and have an aviation themed campsite under the stars. That could be cool. Might try some of that. I'm excited to fly the float plane version of this airplane. Let's get a look from above as well from just look at these conditions. Just barely made it. And we'll end it with the replay. We'll just check out the replay of the landing, and that will be it, my friends. Until next time, go vote on the next stream. For some reason, we lost our recording. I don't know why we lost our recording. Oh, that's lame. I wanted to watch that one. I was excited to watch that one. Why did we lose our recording? I guess I waited too long. Oh, well. We'll have a lot more replays, landing replays in the future, and I'd rather, honestly, I think they're more fun to watch when you have some windier conditions. Winds are calm right now. Uh, landings, nothing crazy, nothing too challenging other than the visibility. So this is where we leave off. There is a town around here somewhere. Little town of Talkeetna. Can't really see anything, so I don't know. It's just kind of covered up right now. But uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. You are the best. And I'm so happy to be back live streaming. We'll, uh, we'll keep doing it. And like I said, I'd like to try to do like get to two a week. So thank you guys so, so much. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. If you're celebrating that, just know I am grateful for every day and not just for Thanksgiving. I really do try to practice gratitude every single day. Life is short. And uh, so do what you love. That's what I'm doing on here. It's a lot of fun hanging out with you guys. And uh, there's a lot to be thankful for this week. So hopefully you're getting to enjoy some time with family. If not, then just to yourself and um, enjoying the earth and what it has to offer and just being alive. So uh, thank you guys, and I will talk to you soon. I am out of here. Happy trails.